Okay, we're sitting here with Jake Kutari. Yeah. Thanks for being here, Jake. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, you know, I think you've got a lot to share to the uh, listeners and watchers about kind of your path and how you discovered your path. And I know you're an entrepreneur and you're, you've kind of done a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And you seem to have really been able to discover yourself, what makes you happy, what drives you. And, mm -hmm. and can you just kind of talk about how you've discovered yourself and maybe your journey that led to it or, or anything you can really mm -hmm. say to help our listeners that are you finding know, themselves? I think that's a really good question. And for most of us, we don't really find what we want to do. We, we discover along the way a lot of things that we don't want to do. That's so true. And that was me, I think, from 19 to 27, was discovering things about myself that I didn't want. Um, married, I got three kids. I'm always a stay-at-home mom, and we chose to homeschool our kids for the simple fact that there's values that we want to instill in them that, that they can instill in the public school system and there's even elements missing in private education, which is fine. And so, but we found a path for that. The reason being is that when, when, when we raise our kids, which you don't really raise kids, you raise adults through childhood. Sure. And, and I want to give them an experience that they can draw from because parents typically parent the way they're parented. Yep. And, 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 and I, I, I thought about that a lot growing up. Um, my dad was a minister, and I watched him build a church from uh, the, the basement of a person's house into St. Paul Tech College Auditorium and, and about 400 members, and then I watched that also decline and go away, and I watched that passion that my dad had actually go away, and I thought to myself, hmm, when, when my dad changed vocations, he was about 37 years old, which I'm 37 right now, and it's, it's, it was unique to see him lose his drive, and I told myself this at that time that I never wanted my family to experience that with dad. You know, because it's yep. so important. One of the things I see missing in, in, in today's marketplace is there's a lot of young men out there that don't have the right direction, and so they act out. And sometimes they act out in ways that they don't realize is immature. You know, mm -hmm. maturity has nothing to do with age, by the way. There's a lot of people that they get older, maturity never catches up. And so, and, and, and a lot of that comes down to their childhood and, and in the, in the path they were shown. And so when I experience things, and I started, you know, wanting to make money. I started, I started wanting to become successful. I had that drive to not just, I wanted the lifestyle of being a millionaire, so to speak, but I also wanted to learn the value that I could bring other people along the way. And I discovered that through doing a lot of things that did not bring me satisfaction. Um, right now, the things that are most important to me is actually financial freedom. Sure. I believe that everybody has deserves that opportunity to actually to learn what it means to become financially free. Another thing that's important to me is living above your circumstances, not beneath them. And when I'm talking to to, to folks in the marketplace and, and kind of like how you and I, you know, met, we had a, a very unique experience where we're in a home, homeowner's not there, and this alarm goes off. Well, that could have been like a really embarrassing situation, but we just kind of said, you know, we're not going to let this stop us from, from from moving forward, and it was really encouraging. And so. But so many people, they get frazzled by little things like that and because they, they've never been taught how to rise above that or to see that, that that problem as an opportunity. And I think it's important that everyone learns how to go ahead and live above their circumstances, not live beneath them, okay? The last thing that's a value of mine is to discover what your God-given skills and strengths are, okay? Yeah. And then also learn how to go, and go ahead and give those strengths away to other people. Now, I discovered that along the way as far as being selfish and realizing at some point, Around 27, 28, I realized that it wasn't about me. It was about other people. And this is interesting. I was, I was talking to my son about this exact topic. Um, this has been last Friday. and oh, uh, son? My son's 13. Okay, okay. He's at this, and his name is Joshua. And he's at this unique age right now to where he doesn't know, am I a boy, am I a young man? And so he's looking for this identity, yep. you know? And so he's, um, you know, talking back to his mom, and, and he's just, you know, he's being a jerk to his little sister. He's, so I, I got Joshua's 13, Sarah's 12, and then our bonus baby, Rachel, she's currently two. And so we, we have a unique family setup, you know, yeah. which, is, which is a lot of fun. But he was just being, you know, a, he just acting out like the way a normal 13-year-old boy would act out. And, and so I was having a conversation. I said, Joshua, you're not being a gentleman. I said, you know, do you know what that means to be a gentleman? He goes, um, it means that you're gentle and you're a man. I'm like, obviously, <laughs> old is paying off. You know, this is working well. I said, Joshua, here's what it means to be a gentleman. I said, a gentleman will take responsibility for that other person's good experience in life while he's with them. I said, a jerk takes responsibility for that person's bad experience when they're with him. 
And and as I'm saying these things, I'm like, where did I learn that? That's good. I've never you know? heard that. But and, I like and, it. and 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 it, it's like you know, putting that together. And so, but where I learned that was actually through mentorship. I learned that by other people that were that that I allowed into my life. And so, I'm going to kind of start with the story. Yeah. That's going to lead to a point, I believe. And so, if I were to say where I discovered myself, I was 28. And I was about 12 steps in life in a direction that I didn't want to be. I was okay. working in a dead-end job. Yep. Um, my wife and I were flipping houses. We were trying to be Chip and Joanna Jr. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I was yeah, raising yeah. families in these homes that we were flipping. And we, you know, I, honestly, I made a lot of money. And But I found myself being 20, 28 years old, and I was on the beach with, with my wife. We had had our whole family meet us down in Tampa, Florida, and we're enjoying, we're, we're enjoying ourselves. And I thought to myself, is this it? Is this because I, I thought of all the work that I did for that, and yeah, there was some satisfaction there, but there's also a large emptiness that was there, and so I started seeking mentorship. I started seeking people that were living a life that, from my perspective, would they, they had a lot of satisfaction. Sure. And so um, I met one individual er, er, early on, and, and, and I want to get reacquainted with him. His name is Mark Schmidt, and uh, Mark and his sons they own a company called Amic Custom Builders, and they, they they do some amazing remodeling here in the cities. And, and and Mark and his wife Linda they've been married for 43 years. They have five kids, 18 grandkids kids. All of them are married. All of them are in business for themselves. All of them are, are successful. And there's reasons for that. And so backing up a little bit, when my folks, when they split up when I was 17 years old, my dad moved on to Florida. He made his own decisions. It's okay. There's no animosity that's there. But I was missing that, that guidance piece until about 28. So when I was looking for some answers, and I said, Mark, can you help me? Okay. One of the first questions he asked me was, I said, Jake, what do you want? And I said, I want to be successful. He goes, well, what does that mean to you? And so I started naming things like, I want to have a big house. I want to have this. He goes, okay, let me ask you a question. If you make a million dollars a year, but you get divorced, is that success? I go, well, no. He goes, okay. <laughs> he goes, if you make a million dollars a year and your kids want nothing to do with you, he goes, is that success? I go, no. He goes, okay, so what do you want? And it was the first time that I began to let a man speak into my life and begin to mold me, so to speak. Does yeah. that make sense? Oh, absolutely. And so I started seeking some things. And so... At that moment, I realized I was doing things that, from a selfish perspective, and Mark showed me how I can begin to turn that 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 turn that perspective to be able to add value to other people. So, I, I got into like a trash out business, and I was I was working with banks and foreclosed homes to kind of you know you know get get a home when someone would foreclose on it, and it, it, it was a path that I had gotten into. But what I, what I saw when I was doing those things was a lot of heartache in these people's homes because the decisions were made, or maybe someone lost a job, and I saw this, and my heart went out to the to, to that to that person. You know, I never met them, yeah. you know, but yeah. I saw the results of things, and so I started looking. How can I do something else? And so um, we, we transitioned from that into into a marketing company that we're able to you know market di different healthcare products and things like that just 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 around the, the 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 cities and teach people how to be successful in business for themselves. And what I discovered was this: there's a lot of people that are hurting. They just want to be told what to do. Kind of like where I was at. Yeah. Well, here's what Mark did for me. He asked me questions like, Jake, what do you want? And he started to define it. He said, Jake, success is not an amount of money. It's a way of behaving. It's a way of thinking. And thinking back to that conversation I had with my son and saying, Joshua, this is what a gentleman is, is taking responsibility for the other person's good experience when you're with them. There's a funny thing that happens no matter what vocation you're in. You can be in real estate. You know, right now, currently, I work in storm restoration and for elite exteriors, and they, they, they do a really good job as far as helping people's homes get back to where they need to be. Regardless of that, taking responsibility for that person's good experience when you're with them, what that does is it leaves, your, it, it leaves an impression on that individual. And now it allows you to speak into their life in a unique way. You know, I actually want to give other people hope, Joe. Joe, when, when, we, when we first met, it was kind of like a, I don't know, maybe like attracts like kind of a thing. Yeah. You know, very random. Yeah. You know, very random. But then when we had this conversation as far as what we wanted to, to do, I, I'm, I'm surprised that it went that direction that quickly. Yeah. But it's supposed to, apparently. You yeah. know? Yeah. But when you leave an impression on somebody, now they not now, now their mind kind of goes into that pay it forward, like, oh my gosh, maybe I can do that as well. Yeah. And we've seen this happen in so many individuals. On my way to meet with you this morning, I was talking to um, one of the entrepreneurs that, that I'm mentoring, his name is Scott. Scott lives in Fargo, North Dakota, and Scott works um, he, he works for a real estate firm that, that, that acquires rental properties and they're, they're very, it's called Bird Group. They're very successful. And Scott was asking me questions just about, hey, you know, I'm thinking about doing this. I'm thinking about doing this. What, you know, what are your thoughts? And I, and I went back to that gentleman example. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, Scott, are you taking responsibility for that person's good experience in life when you're with them? And he sat and thought about it for a second. He's like, you know, that makes a lot of sense. And what it does is it really gives him, it really gave him 
an easy path to make a good decision in that moment. Because yep. now he was able to check his motives and say, is this about me or is this about them? Does that make sense? And so what I've discovered as far as in mentorship, as far as in going in, in this path of wanting to be successful, is that is that money follows value. Yeah. Truly it does. People that want to do things, you know, you see someone that wins the lottery, and their life typically within five years goes back or worse to where it was before they won that, 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 that large amount of money. Well, when you begin to add value in yourself, and now you take responsibility for the other person's good experience in life, what happens is this, you know, I wear glasses. And glasses don't change the way that the world actually is. It just changes my view of the world, right? Okay, okay. And so when we add value to people, it changes our view of ourselves, right? And our self-image goes up because now we actually believe that we have something to offer. It kind of goes back into I believe everyone should be able to discover their God-given skills and talents and give them away. Well, in life, up to this point, in my short 37 years, I've only been around this, I've only had so many spins around this ball, thinking about the value in the lives that we've touched just because we wanted to make a difference and money has chased us because of that in, in, in opportunities in ways that I didn't think was going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. my wife and I have discovered residual income. We've discovered things like multiple streams of income. We've discovered things like we want to teach our children how to, be, how to become financially independent before the age of 30 so they can live a really exciting life. I mean, imagine if someone would have said, hey, Joe, I want to show you how to become a millionaire by the age of 30. Now, you're going to work your tail off to do it. But now you're going to be able to experience a, a quality of life from then on that your family is going to be, it, it's going to be unmatched. How cool would that have been? Yeah. Do you know? But, but see, that's lacking in, 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 today's, in today's society. You know, unfortunately, teachers don't do that. I don't think that the churches do a really good job of that. And so people are seeking something. And so I guess my message to anybody is this, is that if, if, if you want to live a successful life, what you want to do is this. You want to find somebody that, from your perspective right now, is, 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 is satisfied. Not 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 wealthy, not 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 makes a lot of money. I mean, they have satisfaction, they have a sense of peace that's about them, and then ask them some decisions that they made along the way. Okay, and then backing up so that when Mark said, "Hey, Jake, what do you want?" I began to define that, and I took some time and really considered it. And I said, "Okay, what do I want my quality of life to be?" And I came up with something. I said, "By the time I'm 45 years old, I want to help 100 people make a million dollars a year." I didn't know how I was going to do that. And, 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 and that's still not completely revealed to me, but I feel like we're on a, tr on, on, on a track to doing that. And now what's the significance between behind a million dollars a year? I think the significance is not the amount of money that a person makes, but, the, but, the, but, but how you develop on, in, in, in that process. Yeah. And then you think back and like, where did I get that desire? I have no idea, but it was in there. Yeah. You know, and, and so when, when I believe that God put something inside of you, and then you maybe Write that, you t it takes a lot of guts, by the way, to write something down, because you take a risk. Yes. Well, the moment you write that down, now something's been created, right? And now you can begin to develop a, a personal growth pattern around that, mm -hmm. right? You can begin to develop, um, in order to go to the next level, it takes an investment. You know, sure. maybe you have to take some classes, or maybe you have to invest some time and some dollars into, into maybe your appearance, or into the way that you communicate, or into a variety of things. But if you find that mentor, to find someone that has that satisfaction, they begin to point you in the right direction. Now, what I discovered is I didn't, I stopped asking Mark what to do. Yeah. And I started asking Mark, I said, if you were in this situation, what kind of decisions would you make? And he goes, good question. Yeah. And so he says, Jake, when you learn how to make good decisions, what happens is this. Now when, you, now when you're in a difficult set of circumstances, you're like, what should I do here? But you've made a series of good decisions along the way. You may not have all the information to make a quote-unquote, you know, educated choice, but you have maybe some trust credits in your bank account, right? To yes. where you can say, I'm going to do something with this, and I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to make this decision, and then I'm going to manage this decision to make it the right decision. Does that make sense? Yes. No one ever taught me that growing up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's so cool. So as, 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 as we look at our children right now, and I want to give my, my daughters, I want to give them a really high, you know, uh, you know, value as far as where they want to go find Mr. Right, but he's going to have to really line up with Daddy. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? And good luck. All right, guys? <laughs> Seriously, I got some good-looking girls, but you, you, you ain't getting to them. <laughs> but then my son to give him a path to follow. Okay, yeah. Not just say Joshua. You can be whatever you want to be, but to show him what that behavior looks like. So all he has to think about is, okay, I'm in this situation. What decision should I make? Okay, so when I was in a similar situation, I made this decision. Here's the outcome. Do you know what I'm talking about? And you're able to then take advantage of experiences. And if you're really confused and you need clarity, ask questions. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. And maybe last story, I, th I think you, you know we we can parlay on. But I was with my daughter Sarah, and she was three years old, and we we're putting together one of those big puzzles. You know, the, I'm sorry, the kid puzzle with the, with the really big pieces. Yeah. It was right after Christmas time, and, and we're, we're we're enjoying our time, and she was so frustrated. She throws the puzzle pieces, and she, I'm like, Sarah, what's wrong? She goes, Daddy, I just can't do it. Three years old, I can't do it. <laughs> I said, Where'd you learn that word can't? She goes, I don't know, I just can't do it. I said, Well, Sarah, maybe by yourself you can't do it. But if I help you, can we do it together? She goes, well, I, yeah. I said, okay, so don't use the word can't in life. If you need, if you, it's something you cannot do, ask for help. Yeah. And you'd be shocked as far as the people that are going to come and actually give you assistance. Yeah. Does that make sense? Well, people and so, be helping. Yeah, exactly. And so that's kind of maybe maybe my story, my journey up to this point, and some things that I've discovered along the way. Yeah. And some visions that I have for the future, and and, and kind of some some things that that molded Jake to make me the way that I am. Yeah. So the common denominator I'm finding in in interviewing people like you is like that satisfaction comes from helping other people, mm -hmm. just like your story, but to get to a spot where you're able to, to really impact other people's lives, you had to come to make some, some very good decisions, smart decisions, make some mistakes, really discover yourself in the, in, in the process, and yeah. having mentors, and you still have mentors to this day, I would imagine, yeah. um, myself as well, and it's, it's just, it, that's true satisfaction, and that's, that's that fulfillment, and that's part of why I'm trying to pass this great information on and document it, record it, put it on a podcast. And yeah, so it's I'm so interesting, you know, that you say that as yeah. far as m making mistakes. Mm -hmm. Mistakes make for great stories, by the way. They do. They, they really, do. truly do. And 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 I would love to, to to share a mistake that I made. That looking back, going, oh my gosh, you know, if I just would have listened. And in 2007, we purchased a home in North Minneapolis, and I was blinded by this home's beauty. It was, yeah. a, it was a big Victorian home, and it was in the heart of North Minneapolis, and here I was. I'd, I'd had some success in flipping houses up to this point, and I mm -hmm. figured, okay, this is it. We got a good deal with it. I mean, uh, everything from, you know, uh, it's weird weird animals crawling into our house <laughs> to burglars to people, yeah, all this crazy stuff. And my wife walking around with a shotgun in the morning, I'm like, it's you know what I mean? It's crazy yeah. having... To, to, to ha having a German Shepherd that my daughter wanted named Blackie, I'm like, we don't know who he is. <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> you can't name. <laughs> it was named the dog Mocha. You know what I mean? Right, I mean, right, all these right, things. Right, right. You know what I mean? It's just funny <laughs> stories. This innocent little five-year-old girl. You know what I mean? But it's so funny when you think about that. That if I would have made a different decision, I had an opportunity to live in a home that we had just flipped, and we had paid for cash. Yeah. And I could have taken that. I, I could have reclaimed that five years had I listened. And what I think about this, Joe, is that the path that our life would have been on had I had I done that would have been good. But yeah. I wouldn't have learned this lesson. Right. And the lesson I learned was it's not about me. And when I started taking my eyes off myself and what I can get, and I started saying, what can I give? You know, I read a really good book, and this, this book changed my life forever. And I'm surprised it's not as more popular as it is, but the book is called The Ten Critical Laws of Relationship. It's written by a guy named Rob Thomas. The Ten Critical Laws of Relationship. Of Relationship, okay. yeah. Okay. And, and so in this book, this guy talks about mentorship. He talks about a protege versus a parasite. Okay. And it's really unique when he starts talking about what you're able to take, but don't just take. When you have a mentor, what can you offer that person? How can you go to that mentorship table and have your hat in your hand, not your sword in your hand? Do you know? Yeah. And then, and then when, and then when you become successful, and somebody wants advice from you, be very careful who you give advice from. Do you know? I heard this term: don't cast your pearls before before pigs. That's kind of a strange, you know, you know, analogy. Don't cast your pearls before pigs. And what that means is this: don't give what's precious to you to someone that can't accept it. And I thought, okay. oh my gosh, you yeah. know, really unique, you know, you know, storyline around that, but. But, but, but thinking about, about, about when you do achieve a level of success, there's people that will want to take from you. Be very careful. Be very careful as far as who you just allow into your life as well, okay? Because there's risk, okay? Yeah, yeah. The greatest investment that we have is our time, yeah. okay? And when we, and we make these decisions to start, to start adding value to people's lives, do it freely. But when it comes to training people on how to do the same thing, make sure that your values line up. Make sure that you're equally yoked. Do you yeah. know, if you have a team of horses, and you pair up a donkey with a Clydesdale, 
that team of horses is now it's 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 weaker than if it was just a Clydesdale by itself. Does that make sense? So being equally yoked is having the same the the, the same breed, okay, that you're partnering up with. Does sure. that make sense? Same so, DNA, same, yeah. same values. Same yeah. yeah, and no one teaches this stuff. It's just right. it's, it's stuff that's discovered along the way. Yeah, you know. And so, anyways, I I, I mean to no, hijack the conversation, man. But I, that that's good. Um, I it's just it's good to hear this, and it's it's good to hear. You talk freely about your mistakes as well, and and you know that pride is a is a killer for for a lot of us, and it, it tends to happen at younger ages, um, from from what I'm noticing, and and part of this um, conversation, I think that can add value to the 18, 19, 20 year olds. It's like, what mistakes did you make? That looking back, yes, they made you who you are, but if you would have known. I know guys like us, we don't tend to look and regret and, you know, we, we turn those things into um, it was meant to be so that yeah. I can help someone else. But sometimes but, just using that is, is you know, it, it could be an excuse to make ourselves feel better. And we, 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 I, I do it too. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just kind of a way to protect our ego, yes. honestly. Yes, yes, yes. But, but that's a good question, you know, and, and, and when I think about being 17, 18, 19 years old, we have those critical decision-making paths. Um, in high school, I was in this program called um, NJROTC, and it was a Navy... Um, junior op, junior recruit officers training corps program, and I was getting set up to become an officer in the Navy. Wow! And this was, and, and, and if I would have taken that path, it would have been fascinating. You know, sure. I would have been retiring here in about a year. You know, with with full with full pension benefits that go along with that, and it would have been wonderful. But I started hanging out with the crowd because my folks had, you know, they they they, they didn't work out some problems in their relationship that stemmed way back before I was born, you know, and they just let that monster, they didn't kill him when it was small, the monster got too big, and they didn't know how to figure it out. My dad didn't have a mentor, he didn't, he didn't receive the, the advice he got from people that would be considered mentors. And so when they split up, and my dad went to Florida to, to, to behave in that way, and here I was, I started hanging out with the wrong crowd, I wanted acceptance. Sure. And I wanted to rebel. I wanted tension. I wanted all those things that a young person wants and they're when to go through that. And this is common. I mean, divorce rate sixty percent right now. And you start looking at that and, and realizing that this crowd I hung out with was was partiers and just you know, drug abuse. And I got introduced to you know that lifestyle that that when you're when you're first learning, it's like this is great. There's nothing okay. better than this until you realize I messed up. You know, I. Mm -hmm. I I, I had missed a leadership academy course that would have set me into an area that would have been really wonderful. Um, I, I, I messed up my Navy opportunity. I, I, I dropped out of high school. All the things I had going for me, I threw it away because of the wrong crowd. Mm -hmm. All right, and so, and I remember, I remember my dad giving this, this sermon years ago, and in the sermon he, he, he made this statement that I thought was just brilliant. He said, and I personalize it, you know, he said, Jake, if you hang around a barbershop long enough, you're gonna get your hair cut. I'm like, <laughs> and that's so true. It's yeah. you know, you know, when you're around that crowd, something's going to happen. You know, you take six very successful people, and you'll be the seventh if you hang out with them. Right? You mm -hmm. take six people that are in a bar to hang out with them, you'll be the seventh drunk. Yeah. You know, and you take six partiers that are you know going really fast in the wrong direction. I was the seventh. You know. But the serendipity is that I met my wife in that, and my wife had the desire to self-improve. And so when I talk about some things that I got, a lot of it was, a, a, a lot of the, the, the movement was when we decided to, quote unquote, change our lifestyle, my wife wanted to do that. And we wanted to take this opportunity to, 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 to do something great, right? And, and thinking that if we hadn't gotten through that mistake, um, I mean... I would have went into the Navy, and I'm sure somehow I would have met Miss Wright and everything else. It would have worked out, but I may not have met Elizabeth. Yeah. I may not have met the mother of my children and the best thing that's ever happened to me. Do you know what I mean? And so, yeah, that happened, but then there are certain dippies along the way. And so I think living a life of regret is huge. But if I would have made one decision differently, I would have, I would have really considered the crowd I was hanging out with. Yep. And I mean, really would have analyzed and says, okay, let the elevator go to the top floor. I know it's dusty up there. It's been a while since we've been up there. <laughs> but let's think about where we're going for a minute, Jake, you know? Yeah. And, um, and and so that's that's that, that's a mistake that would have probably, I would have redone. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so then you got back on track. Mm -hmm. And and here you are able to, um, you know, so some people don't get back on track. Or it takes 30, 40 years. Or they really hurt the people they love or they really hurt someone they don't know or mm -hmm. you know so so you're one of the lucky ones right I mean but how, I mean how did you how did you get back on track mm -hmm. was there something inside of you that that said man there's there's something better there's you know, there's something else out there or 
or this is rock bottom and, and this sucks or what? Kind of what you was know, your turning point? That's interesting. And um, people do exactly what people will do exactly what they want to do, good or bad. You know, and 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 there's there's this proverb. This guy named Solomon wrote this proverb, and in this proverb he said, "Train a child in the way that he should go, and when he is older, he will not depart from it." And so I had a really good childhood. My folks did a really good job. I mean, I had a leave it to Beaver childhood. Really, truly, it was it was it was protected. I had private education. I had a lot of good things going for me. But when I made that decision to act out, and then I was in the middle of it, and I had that moment of clarity, where I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, what what am I doing?" And I found myself again, 27 years old, you know all these paces in life and says, I don't want to do this any longer. Well, there's momentum in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And so I had to make a decision. I, am I going to just live this out or am I going to try to turn this around? Mm -hmm. You know, am I going to be a volunteer victim? Yeah. Right? Or am I just going to take, you know, swallow my pride, be a man, stand in the gap, build a wall around my family of good decisions and begin to, and begin to turn that ship. The risk that, that that I had to take was this: I had to I had to isolate myself from negative influences. Mm -hmm. That was one of the hardest decisions I ever had to make. I had to, you know, I made the decision to stop drinking. Why? Because the way that I behaved when I drank, it, I, I I never did anything negative to people around me, but I made foolish decisions, right? Yeah. And and I couldn't keep doing that and li 